afraid of the monster by my side. He wants to be your friend, and he's really oh so kind. He's learning about the human world and how to get along. So join right in and sing along with me in the Boink Show song. He's Boink. Hey, Boink. Boink. Kindness is his way. He's Boink. Hey, Boink. He's got something to say. He's Boink. Hey, Boink. It's time to start. Hi, I'm your host, Boyk, and this is Caitlin and Avery, my co-hosts, always. And we have a special guest here today. Caitlin, I'll let you introduce him. Who is it? Cap Captain Matt Price from the Farmington Fire Department. That's right, Captain Matt Price. Matt, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, that's, it's great to have a firefighter come in here. You guys get to play with all kinds of really cool equipment. I guess I shouldn't say play. You've got some serious business there, firefighting. Yes, we do. Yeah, what kind of what kind of firefighter are you? I am a captain with the Farmington Fire Department, like you said earlier. Uh, my job as an officer is to supervise and keep everybody safe on the fire grounds. Awesome. That's really cool. How, how many years have you been doing that? I've been on the fire department for six years. I've only been a captain for one. Oh, okay. What made you want to be a firefighter? I have loved serving my community, um, and that's what really got me and the drive to get in there and protect, serve as much as I possibly can, and I just really enjoy it. That's great. You guys have some questions for, for Matt? Yes. Avery, what's your question? What is your favorite type of equipment? Yeah, do you have some cool equipment to show us? Do you have a favorite piece? So I do. I guess what would be my favorite piece would be what we call our SCBAs. Whoa. This is, what, really cool. this is what we are able to use to breathe with. Uh, but this piece of equipment that I have in my hands has a thermal imaging camera built into it. Whoa, really cool. How do you see through that? So what happens is I turn this button on here, and there's a little eyepiece right here, and then there's a TV screen right inside the mask. Whoa, cool. Do you guys see that? Which allows me to see in smoke, very dark areas, which allows us to find people that are laying on the floor or in the bedrooms or wherever they might be. It helps us get them out faster. Oh, yeah. I guess I never thought about how hard it might be to see inside a house with the fire and smoke and all that. Kayla, do you have a question? Um, what happens if you get trapped inside Ooh, the house? Oh, yeah. That would be really scary to get trapped in the house. The smoke everywhere. So if you're trapped in a house and it's just a single story or like a one story type house, what we ask you to do is shut the door first, go to a window, and if you can climb out, climb out of the window. If it's a two-story house, which means there's one floor and then you have another floor above it where you got to walk up the steps to get up to the top, and you're on that top floor and you can't jump out the window or get out the window, we want you to do the same thing. We want you to shut the door. Always remember to shut the door first. Open the window and start yelling for help. And as soon as we come onto the scene, we'll be able to find you right away. We'll get a ladder up to you and we'll get you out of the house. Yeah. That's, that's good advice, yep, you got to look for the firemen and show us, show us more equipment. You got like a big helmet and stuff, so people, you might even look kind of scary when you're in there in the fire, right? With yep. that mask on. So here is our fire helmets, and Very a lot cool. of times this is kind of what everybody knows a firefighter, what they look like for our helmets. Um, and when I had the mask in my hand, like I showed you earlier, this is kind of what it looks like Whoa. when a firefighter comes walking up the steps or comes walking really? into the house. I think it looks pretty cool. Do you think that would look scary? No, not really. Oh, that's good. And if you see the big uh, fire badge that he has on his helmet, you would kind of recognize it's a fireman, right? Mm -hmm. Or a firewoman. Do you have some women on the force, too? Yes, we do. We actually have five firefighter females. That's great. So it might be a fireman or a firewoman that's coming to rescue you. And you've got some other cool equipment you brought. Can you show us what you have? Yep. So, like I showed you earlier, um, the camera that we have on our SCBA, we also have a camera which is called our thermal imaging camera or a FLIR. Uh, we Whoa. can take this into a fire and basically it does the same thing. It shows us heat um, so we can find fire that might be in the walls or up in the attic that we can't see physically. Yeah. But this will help us find that fire. It also helps us find people that are in the house. Like if fire's behind a wall or something? Yeah. Or behind smoke? It also helps us find pets. Oh, yeah. So we have a pet, don't we? Yes. Mm -hmm. A cat. Allie. So we love their pets. 
Yep, if everybody gets out of the house and you say that your dog or cat still might be in the house, we can go try to find them and rescue the dog or cat. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's really cool. What else you got? Then our other piece of equipment is what we call a five gas meter. Um, it helps us detect bad gases that might be inside the house. Mm. And it also lets us know when we have to get out of the house too, when it might be too dangerous for us to be in the house. Oh, well, I, sometimes uh, we detect bad gases in our house, right? <laughs> I use my nose. Yeah. Right, Caitlin? <laughs> Yeah, but those are those are for bad gases that like could be dangerous or toxic or or cause fires, right? Yes, that's yeah. what we use these for to detect. Like if you have a natural gas uh, leak might be in your house and you can smell that rotten egg smell. Oh this yeah, this will detect it and tell us exactly how much is inside the house. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that brings up a, a point too that I remember hearing about is that there's different kinds of fires. Like gas could cause a fire, or wood or paper. Um, but then also electrical things, right? Correct. Um, tell, me, tell us about that and what should kids be careful of? So there are, there's many different types of fires. We have the electrical fires like you mentioned, um, your, your normal combustible such as wood, paper, you know, everything inside your house is flammable. Oh, um, you and, you, and flammable, that's our word of the day. Now let's talk about that, but let's do our word of the day cheer. Word of the day! All right, so flammable. What, Caitlin, you have a definition, don't you? Yes. Um, flammable means um, something that can easily be set on fire. Something easily set on fire. That's a pretty good definition, right? Correct. So flammable. Everything in, in your house is flammable? The to vast majority of everything is, is flammable inside your house. Now, yeah. there's some fire-resistant stuff, such okay. as like sheetrock which helps mm -hmm. protect you. So that's why when we say close the door, if you're in a bedroom, the sheetrock in the door is gonna help protect that fire from coming into that room for a while. But eventually it will come into that room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, that's great. Uh, Avery or Caitlin, you have any other questions? Yes, um, how do you stay safe with candles? Oh, candles, that's something, you know, we have candles, a lot of, a lot of our viewers probably love good smelling candles. Right, so is that something that's very dangerous when you see a lot with fires? It is very dangerous. Uh, we don't see a lot of the candles because we do a, a, a really good job trying to talk to everybody about candles. Mm -hmm. And what the, do you tell them? So the first part that we really tell them is if you're gonna have a candle, it ha needs to have a really good base, something that it can sit on so that it's not wobbly, it doesn't fall over easy, that if you're like jumping around, if you have kids in the house and they're running around, they're playing, it, it's not gonna tip over. Oh. Two, you always have to make sure somebody's either in that room at all times. You don't ever want to leave a candle burning inside of a room that you're not going to be present in. Yeah. And, th and three, you always want to make sure that that candle is put out, completely out, blown out, however you want to do it, that it's out before you go to bed, leave the house, or do anything. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Any other questions, Caitlin? Um, what are some fire safety tips? Okay, yeah, you got a fire safety tips that you like generally share with kids? Um, for the most part, yes. We have, if you find a lighter or matches, mm -hmm. and laying around anywhere, outside, in the house, at a friend's house, always give it to an adult. Okay. We don't want you to play with them. We don't want you to be nervous that you're going to get in trouble. Just tell them that you found this and that you're giving it to them so that they can put it away properly. Okay. Um, some other fire safety tips are if you're gonna have a recreational fire, let's say in your backyard, you're gonna go out and your mom and dad and everybody's having a fire out back and you're having s'mores and all that stuff. Yeah. The biggest fire safety tips is always make sure that somebody's around that fire and they don't leave it unattended, which means nobody's around that, that fire at all. And you always put that fire completely out before you leave or go to sleep. Yep, that makes sense. Well, that's great, that's great. Well, um, you guys wanna say thank you to, to Matt for coming on the show today? Thank you. Yeah, it was really great of you to share all those fire safety tips. And, uh, you know, do you go do out to the schools and talk to kids at the schools? We do every year. Um, and October is our fire safety prevention month. And we, uh, our, target air, our target audience is the fourth grade class. And uh, we do videos. We talk about fire safety. We put our gear on and show them our gear. And then we let them take, a, uh, we take them outside and we let them look at the trucks. Oh, I love seeing the trucks. We've got some video of the trucks that we'll show you right now. Well, thank you, Matt, for being on the show. We appreciate it. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. Let's see some of that footage we took when we went to visit the Farmington Fire Department.
You know, I've been thinking, how many senses can you name? Sight, smell, touch, taste, hearing. These are all really cool ways to interact with the world around us. Our senses help us stay safe too, but only if we use them properly. This is called paying attention. Yeah, paying attention. It can help you identify if something isn't normal or if something might be dangerous. If you smell smoke or gas or hear weird noises, let an adult know. You might just save the day. Um, Let's see. What does a dinosaur's car run on? What does a dinosaur's car run on? I don't know. Fossil fuel. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Okay. There, I didn't think it was solar energy. Knock, knock. Who's there? Nanya. Nanya who? Nanya business. How do oceans say hi to each other? They wave. Avery, hi! It's so good to see you again. Hey, can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. Yeah, when you were just a little girl, like three or four, just a little girl. If you fell down and you got hurt just a little bit, who's the first person you would run to? My mom. Would you really? What's the first thing mom would do to help you feel better? Um, give me a hug. She'd give you a hug? Oh, that's a good mom. So she'd pick you up, she'd brush you off, she'd give you a hug, she'd say, Avery, you're okay. And would she give you a Band-Aid sometimes? Yes, she would. And would that help you feel better? It would. Hey, guess what? Did you know? that band-aids are magic. You didn't know that? Can I show you how band-aid magic works? Okay, Avery, I have a band-aid right here. And I'm going to write on the pad of the band-aid a pretend owie. Okay, oh, almost dropped this. I've gotta have my pen here. I'm gonna put an A on here for Avery. So we know that this is in fact your Band-Aid. So we have an A right here. Okay? All right. Should I show the camera? I probably should, shouldn't I? Because everybody in the audience is going to want to know, did I really write an A on there? And I did. Avery, is it okay with you if I put this A Band-Aid on the back of your hand? Whichever hand you want, just set it out. You want it on the back of this hand? Okay, so we have the A Band-Aid. I'll put it on the back of your hand right here. And Avery, would you just push that down nice so it's nice and stuck? Is it stuck on there? Good. Okay, this is the part, Avery, about Band-Aid magic that moms never talk about. There is always an extra Band-Aid. Did you know about the extra one? No? Let me tell you about the extra one. Moms take the extra secret Band-Aid and they write a secret message on it. I'm gonna give you a hint of what the secret message is not. It is not an A. Do you have an idea of what the secret message could be? You don't? I'm gonna tell you, Avery, because this secret message is very important Mom writes, I love you, right on the pad of the Band-Aid. But she can't really write the words, I love you, because it's too much to write. So what she does is she puts the universal symbol, I love you, which is a heart. Okay, we can see the heart on there, yeah? Then Mom takes that secret heart Band-Aid, and she puts it in a secret spot, Avery. Oh, but this is not the secret spot. This is just for the demonstration. Uh-oh. Am I in the eyebrow a little bit? Yeah. Oh, that's not, that's not so good, is it? I think I'll be able to do this, though. Hey, Avery, does your mom ever say to you, oh, Avery, just rip that Band-Aid off really fast. It doesn't hurt. Does she say that? Yeah, she's not telling you the truth. It hurts more. Okay, this is what we're going to do, Avery. I'm going to tell you the absolute secret about Band-Aid magic. Are you ready? Mom loves you so much. She takes all the hurt and all the pain and she holds it. And then she takes all the love that she can and she puts it right where the hurt was. That's how come you feel better. Okay, take this Band-Aid off my head, but we're not gonna rip it off, right? Because it hurts more. 
and I have an eyebrow right here that might come off with it. So how about if I hold on to my eyebrow? I'll even start you out. I'll start you out. Take that off nice and slow. When you get to my finger, you can let go of the Band-Aid. Okay. What is on the Band-Aid, Avery? A. What? An A. There's an A there? Oh, that's crazy. Avery, what do you have on your hand? Rip it off really fast. doesn't hurt. There's a heart right on your hand. <gasps> Did you know that's how Band-Aid magic works? Mm -hmm. It is. Here, you get to take these home and show them to your mom so you know forever that that's how Band-Aid magic works. There you go, Avery. Hi, everyone. Allison Cromie here. Are you ready for a guessing game? I'm going to sing some clues about an animal, and I want you to guess what it is. Just shout it out when it's time. Ready? Listen closely. I live on a farm and I sleep in a barn. I'm raised for my milk and my meat. I have four hooved feet. Can you guess what I am? I'm a cow. silent in flight. Can you guess what I am? I'm an owl and the owl says who and the owl says who and the owl says who 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 I live in a house and I'll catch you a sharp nails. Most of us have long tails. Can you guess what I am? I'm a cat.
Well, everybody, that was it for today's show. Thanks for watching. I'm here with a couple of our production assistants, Jace and Mason. Hi, Say guys. hi, guys. Hi, How's it going? Hi. Good. Thanks, hi, for, thanks for helping us yeah. create this wonderful show. Yeah, anytime. Come yeah. on in. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching today's episode, and make sure to follow us at imboink.com, and we'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye. Oh, that sure sounds good.